It might look like I'm in some French chateau today, but I'm actually hiding under this tree to escape showers. One minute it's beautiful blue skies, next minute hailstones. Welcome to Ireland, welcome to another Nobby on Cars review. This is the brand new Renault Clio. Guess who's back in town though? That's right, the brand new Opel Corsa. We're gonna pitch it against the Clio. This car also has 100 brake horsepower petrol engines. Yes, you can get a diesel lineup. Yes, the E-Corsa is coming. So let's compare this to the Clio, see what the boot space is like in comparison. Is the back any bigger? What's the technology like? And these are two cars that people are gonna be comparing each other. So hopefully you're gonna make that job a bit easier for you in this video. The thing about the Clio is it's cheap. Like it starts from 17 grand. Now this one is about a five or short of 21,000. It's an iconic model. There's four different trims. There's a couple of different petrol options. There's a hybrid coming later on in the year. There's a diesel option. Well, not got huge output. And I think they're really kind of, for a city car, a super mini, trying to push it towards a petrol option in it. Opel want the good times back when the Ireland jersey had a big Opel badge on it. We were good at football and they want to get back to those glory days. So that's the Corsa. What about the boot and the Clio? It packs quite a big punch. Like for example, the boot is, is pretty big. Although for some crazy reason, Renault have put the button for it above the number plate. And then you lift it. It's a bit strange. Your hand's gonna get filthy. Now there's a huge lip here. So you might want to go for the option of uh, a shelf that you can change things. There's not much going on here. There is a light, first aid kit. Probably because it's French. Well, they do like being prepared, like this high-vis jackets. And I think even in France, you have to have a breathalyzer in your car at all times. So maybe that's what that is about. And the shelf is quite small to remove. And when you put the seats forward, you get quite a big uh, area to load stuff. I think the back is actually possibly one of the best looking parts of the course of the boot with the Clio, very, very similar. You still have a bit of a lip. You do get a spare wheel. You can put your rear seats forward and give yourself an extra boot. Not much else going on here, just like the Clio. There's a couple of hooks to tie things down and that's kind of it. It's basic, but it'll do the job. And you'll mm, get a, a normal size buggy, but any of these bigger things, the things that they can clip on and stuff, yeah, forget about it. They have catered for people with three children in the car, however, because there's three eyes of fixed seats, two in the back and one in the front passenger seat, just like the Clio. Little uh, warning for people with smaller kids, the door handles are up here, which means some of them can find it hard to reach, or you could just leave them at home, you know, peace. Renault say that the space in the back has more room than the last model. Really? My seat isn't all the way back. So if I was over six foot, I don't think I'd have any legs left. Um, there's not a huge amount going on for rear passengers. You do get key fit windows. Yeah, old school. You keep the cost down, I suppose. No armrest here, uh, nothing here for charging. Head height is all right. You know, come on. What do you expect for the money? And there's little pockets behind the seats as well for keeping things in. Well, they're not massive. Again, just like the Clio, the front driver's seat does come fairly back to your knees. However, underneath the seats, there is definitely more space. So I think for getting your feet tucked under here, there's probably a bit more give in the Corsa, but it's still pretty much as compact. There's still no center armrest. There's no charging functions down here either, USB and the like. Head height, pretty much on a par. There's a bit more of an obvious groove. The back of the seats here, again, a little bit of a cutout for knees. Slightly bigger in the back of the Corsa compared to the Clio. This car also has an option right beside the gear shifter that you press and the child locks come on electronically. So they can't get out and neither can I. There are lots of things worthy of mention for the Clio. However, things like road sign recognition, lane departure, You've got CarPlay and Android with the car, so you don't spend an awful lot to get quite a bit. I'll tell you more about it when we jump into the front of the car, which does seem to be a bit more spacious. So you get Renault Keyless, which is just this little key card. 
They've even put somewhere to put it. Something else they've done, which I'm very, very happy about, is the cruise control buttons are on the steering wheel where they should be. They're not down beside the handbrake, which when you're trying driving a motorway and put on things like cruise control, you do not need to be looking down here to try and activate something. Uh, this trim of it, again, you're talking less than 21,000 euro. The iconic version of it, anyway, has manual air conditioning. It's more than enough in a country like Ireland, to be honest with you. And there's two... USB, there's an auxiliary in, there's even a 12 volt. Your display is analog needles. It still looks well though. It has a color cluster here to tell you about fuel economy, which is somewhere between five and six liters per 100 kilometers, no matter how hard you drive this car, which is, uh, which is good. Now the plastics again, they're, like they're soft where, they've, where they can be. I think they've done something clever. They've distracted you from the stuff that they've had to save money on, the cheaper plastics, with good stuff like this. Steering wheel feels nice. Gear shifter feels good. It's at a nice angle actually. It's, it's up high here near your kind of knee height when you're in the car. There is a traditional not an electronic handbrake unfortunately. And these uh, dials, they, there's a little bit of give in them, you know. Build quality overall is alright, but things like that. But I think they've done a reasonable job for the money. You get Android, CarPlay, streaming, all included in the head unit. This is a 7-inch upgrade. There are smaller screens, uh, but I think it's worth going for that. The rear of the car, the C-pillar, is a huge blind spot, particularly if you're reversing out of a space. Get yourself the reversing screen. You don't get it as standard, not even on the Iconic. It's still uh, a display, but not the actual camera. So get the camera. Either spec it or go for a level above trim that will give you that because it's going to save you. But auto fold mirrors, three spoke steering wheel, nice driving position. So the Clio isn't exactly doing anything wrong, but how does it stack up to the new Corsa? Because amongst these two cars, that's where the competition is. They've also included an Isofix seat in the front in the Clio. Over to you, Corsa. It's the first Corsa in 12 years, believe it or not, and there's a few different levels of trim. You've got Corsa SC, Corsa SC Premium, Corsa Elite, and Corsa SRI, which this one is. It is a little bit dearer and a little bit of higher spec compared to the Clio, but it's things like trim, color inside the car, different wheels, not gonna change the engine lineup or bits like that. Random fact about Opel, one in four sold in Ireland is a Corsa. So I imagine that statistic might even get more impressive when people get to know this new car. It's a nice bright layout in here. Again, depending on whether you go for things like SRI or not, you're gonna get red strips on the dashboard of the car that brightens it up and the silver bits here, a nice bit of contrast off it. The screens angle a little bit towards the driver which is fine, you get Android, CarPlay, depending on trim and options, you'll get Nav, but obviously with CarPlay and uh, Android, you can just use the maps on your phone. Uh, the Opel steering wheel is pretty much what you've been getting in their models for the last uh, year or two. Same with the instruments, the display, your fuel range, they all very, very familiar. And uh, I think compared to the Clio, build quality inside is just a little bit more impressive. The high gloss around the gear shifter, things like that, just make it feel a little bit nicer to be in. Uh, the plastics are nicely softened where they need to be. And actually, things like the indicator stocks on the Clio are, are actually probably a little bit better to touch. But that's the same here. It's Plastics are a little bit soft. Good attention to detail. It's a bit harder here. I, I, well, of all the things people comment about car review videos, by the way, I've never actually seen anybody not touch the interior plastics. It just gives context of the quality of the materials used. Yes, a lot of people don't ever do that. You know, but just to compare, just humor us, will you? The Clio definitely has a bit of a tight squeeze between the foot rest and the clutch and pretty much exactly the same in the Corsa. So more narrow shoes or don't use the foot rest because you might get stuck looking for the clutch. These seats are also really, really good. SRI ones, extra bolsters, nice and supportive. No leg extenders, but you make do. And the little bits of red in the middle give it a nice sporty feel. The interior of the Clio is also still good at the price. Just a bit more black, just a bit more dull looking. I do find this car, even though they have 
identical brake horsepower, just a bit livelier and I, the Clio is perhaps just a little bit gutless in comparison and I can't explain that. Uh, I'll go digging into weight comparisons or something. There's, this car just, I mean the Clio does like to be revved as well but I just feel you're having more fun from what is a 1.2 in this case engine and the fact that it has a sixth gear just means it's that bit quieter and uh, calm I suppose on motorways and if you're going to do motorway driving in your Corsa or your Clio then I think a sixth gear is a nice thing to have. Six speed sounds good in the Corsa what about the Clio? It's a five speed, really needs a sixth, and motorway driving, definitely. But to be honest with you, you'd be surprised with the low range torque in, in modern uh, turbos. You'll find yourself in fifth gear not going particularly fast. So I think you, you could have stretched to the sixth, Renault. You could have stretched to the sixth. And the gearbox can be a little bit notchy for reverse. You know that thing where you put it in reverse and it won't go in, you have to take your foot off the clutch, put it into neutral, put your foot back in the clutch, put it back into reverse, and then it goes. It does that quite a bit. And it revs, by the way, like it really, really revs. Second gear was, I find that a lot with Renaults as well. They want you to kind of have a little bit of fun. There's plenty of range where you can enjoy yourself and stretch its legs. There is a sport button that you can press in this, and there's definitely a sound actuator that you hear spring into life and it is it's quite a ridiculous sound for a 1.2 petrol with a 100 brake horsepower it nearly sounds like a Golf or inside the cabin um, but it's you know it's, it's just a nice little gimmick whether that actually makes you drive faster I don't know again through twisties roundabouts and other bends I just find the Corsa a bit more planted and just is more fun to throw around there's more petrol than diesel options in the Clio in the new model kind of makes sense there's also a hybrid version of the car coming later on in this year and Renault are well ahead and things like the Zoe as well in terms of electric vehicles so this turbocharged version of the car has 100 brake horsepower it's a three cylinder engine whatever they've done you would struggle to know that it's a three cylinder not that everybody hates the sound of three cylinder either Some people really are a fan when you're revving it okay you'll hear a bit but when you're driving um, there really is not any major sign that you're on something that doesn't have four cylinders. There's a 75 brake horsepower non-turbo petrol version. I think the extra power, well, it does. There's no think about it. The extra power does help the car with its progress. 100 brake horsepower in a car like a Clio is more than enough. And uh, there is a more powerful petrol version that you can get with 130 brake horsepower. So you're well covered. So now that I am actually here, going nowhere quick at the moment, it's a good opportunity to tell you about the C-pillars in the car. They are fairly wide. Now you do get a, not a camera, but you'll get reverse sensors that will beep and there is some sort of uh, a display on the screen for you. But it doesn't have cross traffic monitoring, for example. So that rear pillar, if you're trying to reverse out of a space, it really, really prohibits your view. And you find yourself, if you've driven forwards into a space and you're reversing out, you are edging and edging your way out until you get a clear view of, of, of anything's coming from your left. So, spec the camera, because you can't change the design of the car, but I would go for the reversing camera, uh, it'll be worth it. You're still getting things like that big nasty C-pillar that isn't great for being aware of your surroundings this seems to be a bit thirstier on juice whereas I found no matter how hard you drove the Clio you couldn't really get it past six litres per 100 kilometres and this is closer to seven I haven't seen seven to be fair to it it's about 6.8 but 
it is that small bit thirstier. For the price, the technology it has, like you get CarPlay and Android and all that good stuff, but it even has sensors in the windscreen of the car that will read road signs. And that is coming more and more commonplace, but in a car that's 20 grand, that's impressive. Very much like the Clio, well insulated for a B-segment car. Really struggling to hear the outside world, and it's very nice and calm inside the uh, interior of the of the car. So very much even there, I think. It feels to me like Renault doesn't have to try as hard. Corsa hasn't gone anywhere either, but this new model is a big deal being made about it. And Renault were kind of just like, yeah, the new new Clio out, yeah. And what? With this car, you're getting something that doesn't really look like the previous model. So if you're looking for that standout, oh, that's the new Corsa, rather than, oh, there's a Clio. That's another thing that may or may not bug you. But again, all these things are important when you're figuring out where you're putting your, your 17, your 20, your 23 grand, depending on uh, what stage of the model lineup you go for. You forget as well, because we're all so obsessed with crossovers, how much easier these cars are in town in parking spaces you can actually park between the white lines open the door and you actually have room to get out of your car you're not banging it off the car beside you you're not trying to squeeze through the gap yourself which is always uncomfortable you kind of forget about the benefit of super minis they will make your life easier in so many ways running costs and fitting it into car spaces just being two of them well, like all good things, this video must come to an end, and it's decision time. I think if it was me, and it was my money, I'd go Corsa. Thanks for watching. <laughs>